Well, hello everybody out in Alabama and uh, thank you so much for joining our little wine down with Fairmont. My name is Kathy Dales and I'm the Director of Tour and Leisure Sales here for Canada's Western Mountain Region. So I have the privilege to represent four beautiful properties, uh, the Fairmont Banff Springs, Chateau Lake Louise, Jasper Park Lodge, all within Alberta. And then over in British Columbia, just north of Vancouver, I have the Fairmont Chateau Whistler. So my background today is not real, it's virtual, and I'll take it off so you can see my hands move when I am uh, get going here. But this is actually the Fairmont um, Banff Springs Bar, the Rundle Lounge. And I chose this whole concept because it's under renovation right now. Um, they're redoing two levels of the, um, the lounge, which will be absolutely stunning. This is the lower bar um, when it's reopened, and that will be hopefully by um, early July. Um, unfortunately, before all of this happened, we had ordered our uh, carpet from Egypt, which is coming by ship, apparently. Oh, wow. Our furniture is coming from China, which is also um, on a bit of a slow boat. So um, once that comes, hopefully we'll be reopened for July, just in time to welcome all of your um, clients as well, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to just switch this off so you can see my hands move. Um, but what we're going to do today is we are going to make one of the Rundle Lounge's um, famous cocktails, and it is their red wine sangria. So I sent out the recipe beforehand. I know there's at least one person out there that's going to make it with me. So um, the recipe called for citrus or apples. Um, I'm a berry person, so I chose to have some blueberries and some strawberries. And then you could also use either brown sugar or honey just to make it a little sweeter. So I've got some brown sugar that I'll put in here. And you're just going to muddle that for a few minutes um, to get it all nicely mixed in with the sugar and all the berries crushed so the flavors come out. I'll tell you, this recipe, when I first got it, um, I had sent it on to our food and beverage director um, just so that I could get the ingredients from the hotel, some of them anyway. And um, he called me right away and he said, Kathy, where did this recipe come from? And I said, well, I took it from the website. It was on, it was online. And he said, well, my goodness, I don't know who would make a sangria with a cup of brandy, but you don't want to do that. <laughs> so per <laughs> his instruction, <laughs> I have adjusted that to be a quarter of a cup. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> right? I mean, I guess. Um, and you can use brandy or you can use rum. Um, you don't have to include it at all if you don't want to, but I'm gonna just put this fruit and sugar mixture into, this is a really heavy piece of equipment here. All I had was blackberries. Do you think that's just as good? Oh yeah, I bet you it is. Is that what you have? Yeah, blackberries, oranges, and apples. And all I Yum. have is rum from Key West. Perfect. <laughs> okay, we're going to try that. So I'm going to add the brandy. Oops. And then three quarters of a cup of um, orange juice. And then for the wine, they recommend it something dry. So I have a lovely Syrah from France. Yum. So put that in as well. Gonna make up for that other quarter, three quarters cup of brandy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? If it if it tastes too strong um, of alcohol when you try it, you can always add in a little bit of ginger ale or soda um, just to take that bite out of it. Um, I also have an orange slice here or a chunk that I'm going to mm. put in. Oops, and then I'm just going to give that all a big stir. So that's it. <laughs> it's that's not it? very complicated. That's it. That's the kind I like. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
easy yet delicious. So I've got my glass and I'm going to cut some ice. Mm. I won't forget my wine glass. Mm, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> That's important, Nikki. Uh -huh. And there you have it. Yum. Nice. Yeah. That's easy. It is I really easy. It. It's simple. So sometimes life's best things are simple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love so what it. I'll do is, um, did you have any questions about the recipe at all? I am looking like, forward to sorry. doing that. I've got some raspberries in the house, so uh, yeah. I'll try it with my raspberries. That would be really good too. And you can yes. substitute it with a dry white wine as well. Okay, sounds for great. White, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'd give you, and I apologize if you can hear the train in the background. I live just on the tracks. <laughs> but, um, uh, I'll give you just a quick update on the four properties. Um, they are currently closed, as you may have heard. Um, we closed back in April, um, but we do have firm reopen dates of June 1st. So the four hotels will be open as of June 1st. Um, it'll definitely be at um, a smaller capacity. So we'll only have a certain number of floors um, open for the first phase. Um, we will have one restaurant, which will be the Vermilion Room, which is one of our larger dining areas. And that's so that we can um, appropriately space um, guests that are coming in to the dining room. Um, within Alberta itself, and uh, it's kind of hard because each province has its own regulations right now. So within Alberta, with the three properties here in the Rockies, um, we have our first, re our first phase of opening. Um, within the province um, next Thursday, the 14th. And at that point, um, thank you, uh, we can get our hair done again. So they'll be reopening uh, the hair salon at the hotel um, and some of the additional outdoor activities. Uh, our golf course reopens on May 29th. Uh, Jasper reopens on June 1st. Um, still waiting on a date for the golf course in Whistler, but um, that's exciting. And then as things progress and hopefully number of cases decline um, and recoveries go up, uh, we'll go into phase two, which will open up another series of um, retail shops and that sort of thing. And then within phase three, that will be when for Albertans anyway, we'll have access to um, non-essential travel again, which right now is, is on hold. So uh, my poor mother's been here stuck with me for, <laughs> since February, she was supposed to go home in April, but um, we're waiting for that to clear up so she can get back home. But um, with the hotels, it should be, I mean, it's not gonna be business as usual, that's for sure. We're gonna, we're going into the next normal, um, but we are just in the process now of um, implementing and um, just finalizing all of our new um, health protocol. So we'll have different um, standard operating procedures for each of our departments. Um, with regards to safety and health that will be implemented and um, yeah hopefully we we get through to the other side we're still waiting for that U.S. border to reopen uh, May 21st is the date that the Canadian government will make another decision and it could extend for another 30 days or it could open I guess we'll have to see how both sides of the border are faring at that point but um, definitely trying to stay real positive and and hope that it does reopen sooner rather than later, for sure. We're looking forward to Kathy. <laughs> yes, us too. Us yes. too. It's, been, it's, it's not been that long from a week perspective, but it certainly feels like an eternity for sure. Yes. Um, we're just in the process of well of calling our staff back to work. Um, probably 85% um, have been temporarily laid off. So um, next week, they'll be making calls for people to come back um, because they are required to self-quarantine for two weeks prior to starting work. So lots of stuff going to go on next week with people coming back to, uh, back to Banff. But it's been pretty interesting. I've been trying to get out to walk at least once a day at lunchtime. And um, I've never seen so much wildlife in town before. Mm -hmm. um, the, just the lack of traffic, both human and car, has really... Um, welcomed the deer back into town and the elk and there's been uh, mountain goats um, on some of the trails and it's just been real fun to see that side of it for sure that is neat 
it's a good time for uh, nature to be replenished during this time. Sure. I think. I'm Liz. I'm thankful Hi, for doing this today and love your background. <laughs> well, actually, this is my husband's man cave. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the real background. Nice. <laughs> but you know what? It's got a table and it's all set up. So it's well, kind I of thought you were in the one. I thought you were at the bar at the hotel. I had no oh. idea you were husband's cave. <laughs> Every man's dream. He's yeah, man's dream. Dream. Yeah. Yeah. Work, so. I, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> no, me either. I would like that too. Yeah. That's yeah. Women awesome. cave. Yeah, exactly. Yes. She shed. She shed. <laughs> she shed. <laughs> that's a commercial here that we have that jokes about the she shed. Right. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> oh. Can we do um, a virtual toast that yeah, we can sure. if anyone has a drink oh wait let me get something hold on yeah hold up your drink wait give me one get... minute i'm waiting <laughs> <laughs> well while she gets that kathy can i ask you a question about the park itself is the national park actually open yeah so the park okay. is open um there's no services within the park meaning um anything run by parks canada yeah. like the um the hot springs or the information right. center, mm -hmm. anything with a door basically is shut. Okay. Um, but the park is open um, on weekends. Mm -hmm. And I think they started it just prior to the Easter weekend. Um, mm -hmm. On weekends, we've had the RCMP set up um, checkpoints coming into mm -hmm. town and the two sections coming into town. Mm -hmm. so just to, I mean, we can't tell people not to come, but just to encourage people um, to educate them that there are no services within the town yeah. um, available to them. Um, we're really trying to make sure that we have medical services for the the residents that live here mm -hmm. um, and kindly ask them to reconsider their trip. Um, so probably 90% of the traffic that has been coming in on the weekends has decided to turn around and go back home. So mm -hmm. um, it's local traffic for sure. It's, it's people coming out from Calgary. Um, yeah. And again, with this weather turn for the worst, it's actually a good thing because no one wants to come to Banff when it's cold and rainy. So <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right, does everybody have their? Okay, everyone have their drink? <laughs> yes. Got it. Hold it up. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thank you Cheers. so much for joining today. Thank you. <laughs> this Wonderful. Is yeah, I love your wine glass. I, I do wine too. glass, Marissa. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're similar. <laughs> Oh, they're soulmates. Maybe they should get together. <laughs> they should. Y'all hold them Take up. Some more. <laughs> hold your tw twins up. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's Hee -hee. Very nice. <laughs> Did anyone have any questions about it's, the hotel? Or? It's very good, by the way. Very young. Oh, good. I haven't tried one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Glad it's Friday. <laughs> oh, I'm planning on opening a bottle, but I mean, I needed it for the picture, you know. So. <laughs> There are priorities, right? So, yes. Kathy, um, you probably shared this with your team. Is there anything new that you picked up from this period of time that you want to do differently when you go back to work? Anything that's a new lifestyle change for you personally or professionally? Yeah, that's a great question because I think, um, I mean, I've been really blessed to be still at work, um, although I'm working from home, um, where I'm on reduced hours. But one thing that I've been doing just for my own mental sanity is to get outside. So I, you know, I told my boss I'm going to be gone for an hour at lunchtime, and I've been doing a lot of kilometers, <laughs> but it's good. It's it's good to get the fresh air. It's good to clear your head. It's good to keep up with the COVID drinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think for sure that's one thing moving forward that, um, because we're also busy and we're also scheduled. And I think that's been the hardest part for me personally is um, I'm used to having, I've got two teenagers. I'm used to having a calendar on the side of the fridge with all of their activities, all of their appointments, where my husband's going, where I'm going. And I, I got nothing, <laughs> it's blank. So that's been a struggle. So I think having the time and opportunity to take mm -hmm. time for me 
um, to do that has been really good. And it's something that I want to make sure continues when things are back to this new normal, whatever that looks like. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really good, Kathy. Thank you. Yeah. How old are your kids now? Anyone? Oh my gosh. Uh, 18, senior in high school. So oh, yeah. him and his friends are very sad. It's going to be very different graduation, but, um, and then my daughter is 15, just finishing grade 10. Yeah. I know time goes by so fast. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. When we were there, Kathy took us by one of the year um, event spaces. What was it where you guys go in and play um, curling? Yes. Yeah. The rec center. Yeah. We were so at, we were just admiring her and kind of in awe. She was like, I'm on a curling team. I was like, oh my gosh, the only place I know that does that is the Olympics, you know, but <laughs> they don't do that in Alabama. Yeah. Um, Be sure so. to find ice there, hey? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that was really cool. that on the call because Basha and her husband Bo, mm -hmm. Basha works with us. Yeah. He was on the curling team in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, great. So there, she's from Canada and that's obviously a very popular sport for y'all. You know what? It's kind of the winter golf. It's that sort of um, atmosphere. It's very social. Um, it's very most people are very casual and not super competitive, but um, yeah, it's just, it's a really social um, sport. So that's been a lot of fun too for the winter. <laughs> we have long winters here. <laughs> yes. I'll have to look that up because I'm not familiar with it. Okay, so I have a qu another question. I'm, I'm, a, I'm very inquisitive. Is, <laughs> uh, what are some of your leaders of Fairmont doing that, that pe you really appreciate? Um, I think number one is just the caring. Um, when our general manager had to announce to everyone that the hotel was going to be closing and people were going to have to go on temporary layoff, um, he had to walk away like he couldn't finish speaking and it was really touching and moving. Uh, I think the other part was um, it's just the ongoing communication. So we get um, updates, uh, live updates through our Facebook page um, every week, we get newsletters twice a week. Um, and just on how supportive they are for the staff that are still here. We still have about 400 staff living in staff accommodation, not working, um, but they're getting three free meals a day. They're getting free rent. Um, and our activities team that typically would be doing activities for our guests right now are working around the clock to come up with calendars, weekly calendars of social distanced um, activities. But we're so blessed here in the Rockies that we can go outside and still have five or 10 people out on a walk that are spaced appropriately. Um, they're doing um, guided bike tours. They're doing um, trivia online. So they're, they've really been you know, just so important to the staff that are still here mm -hmm. and with the updates to those that are hoping and, and waiting to come back. So that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. It, sure is. it invites us into your world to help us understand the depth of what y'all are managing and dealing with. Yeah. Well, and it's crazy because these hotels are so large. Um, with the Fairmont Vance Springs, we've got 757 rooms we've got nine floors we've got three wings um, and all of those toilets need to be flushed once a week all of those showers need to be run for five minutes every week um, so we have our executive team um, that's kind of divvied up and taken a floor and a section of the hotel that go in and still do that just to make sure that things are still going because i'll tell you i was in yesterday and it's dark there's no lights on, there's no music playing, there's no scent in the lobby. It's, um, it's surreal. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Incredible. Kathy, tell them about that ballroom, um, that historic ballroom at the Bant Springs. Yeah, so one of our so functional cool. spaces um, is called the Cascade Ballroom, and it is straight out of the 1920s. Um, beautiful hardwood, glossy floors where um, back in the day we would have eight piece bands come in and play during dinner and then have dancing after dinner. The ladies would be in their ball gowns and the men in their tuxedos. 
Um, and it was just such a special time. Um, that space now is very popular, as you can probably imagine, um, for weddings. And we do a lot of weddings at the hotel. Um, so yeah, hopefully, again, we'll have people back to see it. But um, when I do my follow up to each of you, I'll send a picture of the ballroom just so you can appreciate um, sort of the grandeur of it for sure. Good. Oh, spectacular. You'll have to send us a picture of your family photo too. You know what, I will. Another thing that, I mean, we live in such an amazing community. Um, Banff is um, known for if there's anything happening um, that needs, someone needs help, the whole community comes together. So one of our local photographers, um, and I think they've been doing this pretty much around the globe, um, but he's doing front porch photos. Um, so he's not coming within, you know, 10 feet of you, which is what the protocol is. Um, but you get dressed up in whatever you want to get dressed up in. I saw one family post today that they all got in like vintage ski garb and got their photos taken. It was hysterical. But he came in and he'll take your family photos. He takes four to six pictures. And all he asks is that you make a donation to um, either the, the Bat Springs Hospital, or the Bat Springs, the Mineral Springs Hospital, or the food bank, or whatever um, sort of relief charity that you want to do. But it's been amazing. And he's been posting them on Instagram. And it's just been fun. It's been a fun way for us to see people that we're not able to see as well um, with their families and so I'll send you one of those because they he did a really idea. nice job. <laughs> what what is great saying if we want to follow his Instagram? Uh, his name is Malcolm Carmichael, but the Instagram page, let me just pull it up real quick, is I think it's Alpine Photography. Um, Alpine all one word, Alpine Peak Photography Bam is his Instagram account but yeah he's done that's some amazing so cool. photos that's so cool yeah that's so cool Kathy, this has been amazing we appreciate your being so willing to do this for us and can't wait yes i'm so we glad you reached out yeah it's been amazing i i really do again appreciate your time i know that um there's a lot going on right now in your world so Thank you, and I'll follow up with some pictures and and some more information as I get it from the properties too. Yes, please do. Thank you, so much. Thank you Kathy. Yeah. Enjoyed yeah. getting yeah. to see you and meet you. Have a great weekend. It was nice to meet yeah. all of you. Too. Thanks. So happy happy Mother's Day. Day. Yes, Happy Mother's Day. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Kathy. Thanks. Bye. You. Okay, bye. 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 bye.